People ask all the time, what's a great stock to run the wheel on that's under $20? And I think instead of coming up with a list that way, it's better to teach someone else how to figure out how to find those stocks instead of just being told what the best stocks are. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Thinkorswim scanning feature and how you can set up your scanner to look for option contracts that you could sell to hit your target percent return and hit all your criteria for whatever strategy that you are running, including running the wheel strategy. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is get to the scanner tool and you do that by clicking scan up here. Then instead of being on stockholder, click option hacker and this will let you scan option contracts instead of stocks. Now, it's pretty straightforward. What you do is you add in a bunch of rules that you want to go by for your scanner. And basically, you start with the world of every option available. And then you're using these rules to filter down to just the options that fit your strategy or what you're looking for. Now, there's three different things here. Uh, one of them is all the following. So every one of these conditions must be true for it to show up on the list below after you click scan. None of the following. So these are rules that if this is true, it won't show up here. And then any of the following is, you know, same thing. So all the following is what I'd like to work off of the most. And what you do is go up over here, click add filter. And then you start by adding whatever you want. So in this example, we'll say the uh, stock price we want to be below 20. So we add in stock last price. And we'll say $20 here. And I don't know of any stocks below $5 I'd want to sell puts on and run the wheel. So... I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this to five. And what you can see is this little blue icon here shows you all the available matches that are hidden based off this rule. So you can see all the stocks that we're filtering out already by doing that. So we already got our list down to almost 16,000 or 1,600 stocks. Next, you might wanna put on your strategy that you'd be looking for. So option and I wanna have stuff that is between 30 and 45 days. So my list of available contracts, you can see a small portion of what's available. Uh, I also like to see like return on risk. So option, and you can add as many rules as you want. Uh, return on risk. And I like to see stuff that gets me at least a 1% return. And I highly doubt there'd be anything up here that will fit me, but that's just what we'll leave it there for now. Uh, add another option. Uh, open interest. That's another big one I like to do. Basically, this I just use to filter out the garbage. Like, if no one else is trading this option contract, why should we? And you see that that greatly decreases the amount of junk that comes up. And then I think the last thing we want for minimum stuff is we want the market cap in here. So stock market cap. Uh, where is it? And basically, I don't want to sell options on stuff that could be easily manipulated. So stuff that have less than a billion for our market cap can move wildly pretty quickly. So I would just put this to a thousand. So a thousand millions is one billion. So only stocks with a minimum of a billion market cap will show up on this list. And even then, you still see that we've got stuff that you don't want to put on. So let's go ahead and click scan and take a look at what comes up. And you see, we are seeing 38, 45 uh, option contracts that fit these criteria. Now, down here, you can add columns to get different stuff down here. I'd like to see return on risk here. And obviously we have a lot of stuff that's supposedly returning like 300%, but that's some pretty scary stuff, a lot of it. And that includes stuff that's in the money, obviously. So maybe we do need to change our return on risk factor. Let's just take this down do something that, I mean, even 8% would be absurd, but here we go. And you see, just by lowering that, again, the amount of contracts we see now goes down. And you start to see stuff that might actually make sense. I see like Palantir over here will get you an 8% return if you sell the 22 put. Isn't Palantir selling it lower than that? Yeah, so you know what? I forgot to add one more thing. So 
We're still getting a bunch of contracts that are in the money, and we don't want that. So we're going to add another option filter here. Probability out of the money. And I want this to be at least 30. So that's like 30 delta. Or, sorry, I mixed that up. Uh, <laughs> Probability out of the money, we want to be 70%. That would be 30 delta. I'm sorry about that. Uh, now if we scan, you see some of those in the money puts that were there are gone. But now we still have a bunch of stuff that's only worth like 4 cents per contract. And that just kind of mucks up my results. So we'll add one more filter here. Option. Uh, last. And we'll say we want to make at least 20 cents if we're going to be selling a contract. So that's 20 bucks if we do it. And you see now we're down to 106. We just narrowed that from tens of thousands to 100 things to look at here. And now look through and see if there's anything that you actually like here. I think the first thing I actually see that I recognize here is uh, Ford. So I'm going to... Remember that one. I'm going to write that one down so we come back to that one. Another thing you might find is that you see stocks that you might not ever want to see again when you're running the scans. And there's a way you can get rid of that. So what you can do is create a watch list. Yeah, so watch list, uh, create watch list. And I'm just going to call this one Exclude. Uh, save. And then what I can do over here is I can add a bunch of stocks that I don't want to see. So this will stop it from showing up in future uh, scans. So PK, what else can we add? XP. I don't know what any of these companies are. So why would I ever want to see them again when I'm looking for, for options in the future? RLJ. And now what I can do is go to exclude personal and then put this exclude watch list up that we just made. And if I click scan, you're going to see the first result we should have will be GPS because all these stocks or option contracts that relate to those stickers should now be gone. You can see all those are gone. And as long as I have that set in the future, when I'm looking for contracts to sell, they won't show up. So once you go through the nitty gritty and exclude all the ones that you want to get rid of, uh, in the inverse, what you could do is if you have a watch list of stocks that you do like, you could do an intersect with and choose that watch list. And then only stocks that are in that watch list come up. But that lets you, that prevents you from finding new stocks that you might want to sell contracts on. So that's how you can set this up. And then you can adjust this. So if you have stuff that, if your results are too little, you could turn around, you know what, maybe I'm fine with my probability of the money being 60%. And then what you should see is option contracts that have a higher return on risk come up. And you could play with these blue sliders and adjust what, how many option contracts are going to be coming up for you to look at. And another thing you might want to do is look at volume. If nothing's trading for that day, you could take it out. You could filter by any kind of Greek that you want to. It's really powerful. It's a great way to go down. Uh... This is a great way to find contracts that have the potential to be good. After that, what you want to do is look at this actual stock, figure out what the company is, look at a chart, because why not? So that was PBR. And see if that's actually something that you want to sell options on. So this was $6 within the last year, or within the last two years. I think this might be set to right now. Sorry. Yeah, two years. So two years ago, this was a $5 stock, and now it's trading near all-time highs. That might not be something I want to sell a put on. So I'll just ex ex ignore that one for now. And that's just how you can work through this. Go back to your scanner and look at the next thing that came up is LU, GPS, and just work down the list. So the scanner tool is really powerful. And then you can save these, and it'll save these settings automatically. So when you just come back next time, and they're very easy to adjust. So like days to expiration, if you don't want to do 30 to 45 days, and you want to do smaller, just go ahead and lower it. So let's look for contracts. 0 DTE to 12. 
and you'll see a completely different list come up. It should be a small list because we're still looking for a uh, $20 credit. So you can see the last year, those are still above 20 So AT&T, I guess there's a quick one. You can make a quick 30 bucks if you... All right, so I think that kind of sums this up. I hope that guys helps you so you can create your own filters. A couple of things that you can look at here. And again, you can customize this to be whatever you want. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do here. You can do it based off studies. And you can just pick and choose exactly what you want to work on off of. So thank you for watching. And good luck next week, guys.